The game has just finished. Nottingham Forest nil, Manchester United won in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Let's talk about it. A very boring game. There's not a lot to talk about, but we're going to start with the starting lineups for United. Amrabat came in, as did Scott McTominay, to replace the youngster Kobe Mainu and Harry Maguire, who was injured. There was doubts about Fernandes and Varane before the game, but they went on to play the full night. Credit to them. They're still battling through the game, especially Bruno Fernandes, who's yet to miss. A Man United game through injury. We started off the game quite well, you know. First five minutes, we were creating chances. Anthony hit the bar early on. We were, you know, McTominay getting in the key areas with his headers. But again, he probably should have been putting them away. But, you know, what are you going to do about it? Um, yeah, so we started off the game very, really well. Nottingham Forest looked a bit lackadaisical. But the game just went dead. I'm not going to lie. As soon as it hit the half an hour mark, for the next 15 minutes until our time, I was doing this. Yeah, falling asleep. That was my uh, falling asleep impression. Let me know what you think of it. Yeah, the game wasn't great. And at half time, we found ourselves nil-nil. Neither side probably deserved to be in front. Um, second half, things changed a little bit. We got worse. Forrest got better for the first 15, 20 minutes of it. Again, it was just boring. The game was boring. Uh, I've seen both managers come out after the game today and say both teams tried. Um well, especially Nuno, the Forest manager, he said both teams were good. They created a lot of chances. In a Premier League match, it deserved to be a draw, which probably, he's probably not wrong, to be fair. He probably had a draw written all over it in the Premier League, but I think because of our, you know, our stigma, the United stigma, we went on to win it right at the death. But we'll get onto that later. I want to individualise a few players, not to call them out or anything, I just want to talk about a few players individually. Starting off with Andre Onana, the goalkeeper. He's been on top form since that Wolves game a few weeks ago. He's been, since then, probably one of our better players. He's certainly improving. His distribution's getting better. He's a lot more vocal, a bit of a leader at the back. And he's saving a lot of shots. He used to be spilling them straight into the path of a player to tap him in. This time, he's either holding onto him, parrying him away from danger. He's commanding his area a lot more. And I do like that from Onana. It's the, it's the player we spent £50 million on. And I want to see more of it. I don't want him to drop off. This is the Onana I want to see. Um, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, they're the next two we'll talk about. Again, neither of them had good games, again, which is quite worrying. Bruno Fernandes is playing so many games, though, and I don't blame him for having a bad game every now and then, but the last few games, he's been poor, so it's a consistent basis now. Um, he needs, not obviously, we've got City on the weekend, so I don't condone dropping him this weekend, but when a game comes up, if he's not fit to play, he needs to be rested more. I think he would have been rested a bit more if we were still in other competitions, let's just say. But we're not. That's our own fault. Um, but I think he, he just looks knackered all the time. He, he works his socks off. Um, he's, a, he's a credit to the team. He's our captain. He's our leader. I still love Bruno Fernandes. I just think there's been a massive dip in his performance recently. And I think a lot of United fans will agree. Marcus Rashford didn't seem interested again today. I think it's the fact he's playing through the middle. He just doesn't know what to do. He's so much better off the left. Personally, today, I would have started him off the left, Garnacho off the right. I would have actually started McTominay up front and then brought Eriksen into the midfield, for example. Um, but again, we didn't do that. Rashford played through the middle, barely got any service, walked around a lot. I don't want to see that from him. I think there is a player in Rashford, and I think he will score in the derby this weekend. I don't know why I've just said that. don't know what's come across me there. For some reason, I just think he's going to score this weekend. I, I can't tell you why. I hope he does. I hope he does because he's, he's he's built for them games. He's good in the big games. He's good against City. He's good against Liverpool. He's good against Arsenal when we play those teams in the league. So hopefully he turns it. He turns up on the weekend. It's a massive game for us. I'm not looking forward to it at the minute, but you know, hopefully we can win. Let's just move on. We eventually get a free kick right at the death, uh, right near the end of the game. Bruno Fernandes stood over. I think Alanga brought down Garnacho um, on the left-hand side. And then Bruno stood over it straight away and thinking, there's one man in the wall, Bruno. You can't hit the wall, so just do your best. And, and straight away, I was saying it to the people watching me, my brothers, my dad. I was saying, get it up and over the wall, but make sure there's some dip on it into a key area where someone can run on, get a header, get a touch, flick it on, whatever. And that's exactly what he did, Bruno. So maybe he was listening to me. Maybe I was talking to Bruno throughout the game. Did he have the earpiece I told him to wear? All jokes aside, brilliant ball from Bruno Fernandes. He had the whip. He had the dip. Straight over a langer in the wall. Straight into Casemiro's path. He flicks it on. Gives it a bit of that to the away fans. Casemiro. Love him as a player. 
Um, he actually started bleeding a bit. I think that's probably where he had his stitches against Fulham and he's headed with his stitches and they've come undone, maybe. I don't know. Don't really know where the blood came from. Well, it came from his head, obviously. But you get the point. We win the game 1-0 thanks to that brilliant Casemiro header. But VAR tried to intervene for some reason because they always do, don't they? Um, again, it was they were looking at the Varane thing first. I think Varane was blocking a player off, which you should be allowed to do. I mean, Van Dijk, wrong for... Was it Van Dijk or in the cup final on Sunday? Liverpool, wrong for lit, got done by it for blocking a player off, which I don't really agree. I think it was Endo, wasn't it, who blocked him off for Van Dijk to score his header in the cup final, which I think should have stood. I don't... I just don't get it, to be fair. Why can't you block a player off? He stood in offside position. That It's not even like Varane tried to block him off. He just stood still. He literally just stood still and a player ran into him. He's not going to move out the way and let him get to him. He's should, he should be allowed to stand still and not allow a player to get past him. That should be a rule. You should be allowed to do that. I don't know why they checked that. They cleared that anyway, quite quickly. Um, Morgan Gibbs White's had a lot to say about that on Instagram. He needs to just dry his tears, get on with it, doesn't he? But there you go. Uh, and then they were also checking Casemiro for offside, which I don't understand. I, I really don't understand why. Because straight away on the first glance, from the first five second clip they shown, obviously I don't, I, I celebrate the goal, but I still, in my mind, I'm still thinking, they are going to do something here, they're going to disallow it, we need to check for offside, we need to check for a foul. So then when they started playing it back and playing it back, I saw straight away he's onside. So why is it taking three minutes for VAR to see that he's offside? I could tell, see that he's onside, sorry. I can tell from my first glance that he's onside. So I don't know why we're repeating it. I don't know why we're going over and over again over the same thing when we can see he's onside. I don't know what VAR are looking at. They tried different angles. It took them three minutes to come to a conclusion in which everyone agreed it was onside anyway. Three minutes, waste of time, no need for it. We can see it's onside. Just give the goal. Get on with it. So they did eventually give it. Um, there was five minutes added on. We start knocking it about in the corner. Garnacho, Menu, Bruno. Bruno Werns is a corner. And then Felipe starts kicking off. You know, like the Brazilian guy, the madhead, just starts kicking off for no reason. Grabs Bruno Fernandes by the throat. No red card. Yeah, again, I don't know why. Because, again, I don't want to say this cliche because I think... A lot of United fans, if Casemiro did that, he'd be off. He'd be seeing straight red. He'd be taken away. Um, and it is the case, though, because Casemiro got sent off for a lot less against Palace last season. So I don't, I just don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. But, yeah, even with Rodri, Rodri got sent off for the same thing this season against Nottingham Forest, doing it on Gibbs White. And Felipe's done the same thing and not seen anything. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter, actually. It does matter because the inconsistency is what's ruining the game. You're sending Rodri off, you're sending Casemiro off, so send Felipe off. I don't care if there's a minute left, send him off. It's a red card offence. But I'm done talking about referees, I can't be bothered. Who do you think's winning the FA Cup? Let me know down below. Of course, we've drew Liverpool in the next round. It's going to be a tough one. Obviously, it's going to be a tough one, a big game. We've got City to come first, though, in the league this weekend. I'll see you for a uh, match reaction to that one, hopefully. I'm not sat here crying on Monday morning. See you next time.